G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Friday evening here in Australia, market down again, we've fallen under that $3 trillion mark. So again, it's just up, down, up, down, constantly kind of, we are making our way down very slowly. But then tomorrow we'll pump up a little bit and then the next day we'll fall down a little bit more. But again, we'll get to the charts soon, but we are still making our way down. So again, we got right up to $3 trillion. Uh, and now we're getting down to almost two trillion. We're not too far off, and getting into the two point one trillions are definitely not too far off at all. That's not to say we're going to get there though, but it's just looking that way at the moment, and we can only really go based on what is happening. Unless you're some kind of fortune teller, or you know you can see the future, whatever. Uh, you know kind of reference you want to make to that just to be able to see what's coming uh then congratulations to you you're probably doing amazingly well shorting everything one day and then longing at the next because that's pretty much uh the way the market is working almost uh, it'll go up for a, a day or two and then it'll come down uh substantially the next day and we'll move on to that but anyway 2.26 trillion bitcoin dominance fallen again so interesting but still kind of around that kind of 40 percent mark not a lot of volume at the moment there is panic in the market obviously bitcoin is now at 47,000 look we've been low we've got down to 46,000 but we've been up to 50 something thousand now we actually did wick all the way down to 42,000 which is a level I'm looking for and I mean ethereum gas prices they are just dirt cheap at them well I won't say dirt cheap because dirt cheap is when we're talking cents but considering where they have been are uh, quite cheap I mean I haven't seen ethereum gas fees under four dollars for quite some time Right, so let's have a look at the market. As we can see, you know, yesterday it was looking good. You know, there were nice double-digit movers. Well, now we've got double-digit losses, uh, as you can see right across, not right across the board, but there's a couple there. But let's have a look. There are going to be ones that have done well, though. But Bitcoin, down 2%. Ethereum, down 1%. Uh, Sol made a little bit of a move back to around about sort of $180. My buy-in price is $178, I think, around about there. So I'm a few dollars up, but <laughs> that jumps around uh, quite sort of frequently. And look, again, generally it's just red. But what's done well? There's got to be some removers. There we go. Cello, Bora, Arweave, Waves, Ecomi, uh, Luna, nice making some sort of gains back uh, Solana again with some nice moves there but tomorrow or the day after this may not look so pretty and that has what that has been what the market's doing it generally might sort of slowly creep its way up for a day or two and then the following day uh, we get a fairly big move down and then it creeps up for another day or two but it's not setting new highs. It hasn't been setting any sort of lower lows really compared to where we were before, but there's a pattern that's showing up. All right, so movers, nice. There's a couple, i.e. upwards, a couple of double digit gains. So you're gonna take them any day, but the losses are fairly substantial. I mean, look at that. And again, you're gonna go down quite a long way before you start to see anything in the green. And those that are in the green, aren't that much in the green now before i get on to the charts i want to just have a look at a couple of stories so there's a bit of good and bad so 83 percent of millennial millionaires own cryptocurrencies and nearly 50 percent of them want to buy more in 2022 if you're a little bit older i like myself look what the young people are doing that is the direction that things are going to go they are a glimpse into the future you may not agree with what they're doing, with what they're saying. You may not like it. Now, I'm not talking 16, 17-year-olds. I'm just talking, you know, people in their early 20s, maybe even sort of 30s. They really are setting a good glimpse into where things are going to go because they're going to be us eventually. They're going to be the next, you know, kind of middle-aged generation and then they will be the older generation and will have moved on. If you want to have a look at where things are going, and again, you may not like what you see, you may not even agree with it, but that's what you want to do. Go and look at the younger generation, see where they're going, see what they're into, see what they're going to be like. And that is telling you a lot. And here, 83% of millennial millionaires own cryptocurrencies. That's nearly all of them. So how do you, f how, you know, if you're one of the people that think cryptocurrencies aren't going to make it, really? when 83% of the millionaires, millennial millionaires, own cryptocurrencies, 
I think you know you've lost the plot if that's what you're thinking now never financial advice that is my personal opinion and that's what I look at what is the generation before me doing that's not to say I don't look at what my generation now is doing but particularly the older people and every generation this happens it's not just this older generation every older generation looks back and now I'm not saying all the old people there are some progressive old people but a lot of people when they get older they just they find it hard to change they don't like change they like what they've liked and there's nothing wrong with that but eventually they kind of get faded out that's just what happens and the new generation comes in and they send it off into the new direction so again if you really want to see where things are going look back a generation or two that's going to let you know where it's going it may not be able to get in now because they're too young and there's not enough of them to kind of, you know, vote out the older generation. But eventually the older generation, and again, I'm moving into the older generation, we eventually pass away and, you know, hand our wealth over to the younger generation. We stop working and all those kind of things and the new generation usher in the new future. So these are kind of things that I look at and this is why I'm so bullish on cryptocurrencies because of stats like this. Now again, not every cryptocurrency is going to make it. There's over 10,000 different ones out there. Regulation is coming. It'll be legit regulation. And I think the cryptocurrency markets will be a lot like the uh, S&P 500. And I think the S&P 500 and crypto markets, they will all merge in the end and we'll just have one sort of big market. Uh, and I think it will be on the blockchain and I think it'll run 24 seven. That is my hot tip. When that happens, not exactly sure. But I reckon within the next sort of 10 to 15 years, for sure. I couldn't imagine it will even take that long in all fairness. I think it's probably coming more in the next five. But we'll have to wait and see. Now, the interesting part is half of them still want to buy more, even though they're millionaires. They're just like, yep, I want to buy more. And look, some of these will be lucky millionaires, but lucky millionaires are still millionaires. And sometimes they can stay lucky for quite a while. Sometimes they can stay lucky for nearly a lifetime. It doesn't mean, you know, it's all luck. It just means, you know, there was a little bit of luck involved. But that comes with taking, you know, I don't like to use the word gambling and risks, but you do have to. I've said this before. If you're an ordinary person making ordinary money and you're getting someone else to invest your money, you're not going to get rich. You will not get rich off that money. I'm not saying whatever job you're doing, you know, maybe you're a creator or something or start a business, that could make you rich. But if you're just an average person making average money and getting someone else to invest it, you will not get rich. End of story. It just doesn't happen, unfortunately. Because they take the safest route, like they should, but then they also take a cut of that. They're not going to take the kind of risks that you know people would with their own money. Now, I do not recommend everyone go and invest their own money. I really do not. It's dangerous for a lot of people. They, you know, you will know yourself if you're good with money or not. And if you can, you know, pick up things quickly and understand sentiment, you know, go and experiment with just a few dollars here and there uh, for, you know, like a year or two and see how you go. And if you just, you know, mess it all up and lose everything then it was only a few dollars and then you know it's not for you you shouldn't uh be the one controlling your money you absolutely should have someone else controlling your money but if you have the will and a bit of smarts and you can get out there and learn you're most likely going to well outperform any stock standard money manager because again they won't take the risks that you will and it doesn't mean you go find the most riskiest thing out there please do not do that but you will because it's your money so you're just you're going to be more willing to take a risk as opposed to someone else who's like well this isn't my money if i lose it they're going to be really upset you lose your own money you won't be as upset unless you lose all of it or a significant amount of it but if you lose a little bit you just be like oh well you know i had a crack it didn't work out i've still got more money left over and some of those risks will pay off and when they do pay off because you took a bigger risk than what someone else would have they pay off exponentially. But again, I just don't want you to get confused that it means you should go out and handle your own money and you should be taking risks. Investing's risky, trading's risky, all of that. So you're going to be taking risks, but don't take silly ones. Don't get stupid and grab all your money and just throw it into one random project that you really don't know anything about, i.e. gambling, and just pray that it turns into millions. It could. And you might be one of those lucky, you know, millionaires that we're talking about. But those people more often than not end up losing it as well because they just don't, 
fundamentally understand how to invest and what it's about and then to diversify products and things sorry diversify profits and things like that so yeah just something to consider again if you really want to you know make money through investing in that it won't be done through someone else they're not going to get you rich they just will not you'd have to have a lot of money with them and then be pretty risky which is generally not often with um, money managers and things like that and again they're taking their profits as well so that's why you know you're more likely if you're going to get rich through investing is doing it yourself but again you're more likely to lose it all if you don't know anything and you simply can't learn and do it so it's a double-edged sword so please be careful again I'm never offering you financial advice it's always just my personal opinion but that is one thing I've learned I make more money doing it myself because I've spent the time and the hours it's not even hours we're talking you know legitimately if I put all the time back to back I've probably spent more than a year solid no sleep I'm talking 24 hours just you know understanding money markets and investing and trading and the risks and all those kind of things uh, I really have put a lot of time into it and I can tell you right now I still make mistakes it doesn't make me perfect but I've well and truly outperformed anyone else that's ever managed my money I, I, you know some people will say oh that's just luck uh, you know there's an element of luck involved in everything plain and simple it was lucky that I got introduced to cryptocurrency. It was lucky that I took the time to go and understand them. It was lucky that I took the time to go and understand investing uh, pure and simple. It was lucky that I took the time to have a look at trading and work out that trading really wasn't for me. So, you know, there's an element of luck in there, but I still had to follow through and do all of those things. So sorry, I've got on a, gone off on a bit of a tangent, but again, the information is there of where the money is going and you want to be in front of where the money's going, not following where the money's going. All right, this is a big decision that really hasn't got a, well, I suppose it has got a little bit of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit of, people have been talking about it, I'm, I'm lost for words uh, in trying to describe that. But anyway, uh, the notoriety that I thought it would have got. But Russia is coming to make a decision about whether they're going to blanket ban cryptocurrencies or they're going to legalize exchanges in 2022. Now, I think this is going to have a big effect on the crypto market, particularly if they go the route of trying to ban it. Other countries will follow suit. Now, I think, you know, bigger countries that are really undecided, they're going to wait and see how it plays out for Russia before they simply follow suit. But if it turns out reasonably well for Russia, guess what other big countries will then do? Because no one wants to be the first. There's no countries out there really at the moment, at least bigger developed ones, that have really banned cryptocurrencies. They're all scratching their heads and trying to work it out. And some of them are, you know, again, getting on the front foot. Not that El Salvador is a big country. But again, you know, really getting on the front foot of cryptocurrencies and things like that. And Australia looks like uh, they're getting on the front foot. You know, there's been some positive, uh, you know, sort of regulations, uh, you know, announced but we have to wait and see how they play out yet so we're not quite there but if russia do go the complete sort of ban and again it sort of works out for them watch other countries to follow suit so the battle of whether crypto is going to make it or not is far from over now eventually i have no doubt that crypto will make it they're just they can't really ban it anyway it's going to be extremely hard because it's decentralized and on the internet don't get me wrong they can make it extremely hard but it'll be interesting. I don't think they're going to ban it in all fairness. I think they're going to legalize it. I couldn't imagine too many big countries have had a look at crypto and gone, I reckon we can crush this. I think most of them, although they probably would like to crush it, understand that it's just a leap too far. It's too big. It's too out there. You know, all the money that's gone into it now to try and ban it and crush it, it's just not going to happen. So I'm expecting that they come out and legalize exchanges but they may have some really harsh regulations and that's something else that could catch on. If they come out and regulate it really hard and you know, really kind of put a stamp on it, other countries will hold off and see how it fares and then possibly follow suit. But again, I think the ones with the better regulation where it is true and fair and things like that, they're going to do so well that the countries with the really staunch and just hard regulations are eventually going to have to fold because it's just going to be too much money involved. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. 
I 100% believe cryptocurrencies and blockchain is the future. Now, not all cryptocurrencies, they won't all make it. A majority of them won't. And then I really do think the you know cryptos will be a lot like the S&P 500. Out of the maybe 500 good ones that you have, there's going to be a couple that do really, really well. And then all the rest just kind of make up the numbers. That's, that's my true belief. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's going to be more than five really good cryptocurrencies. But there's not going to be like 100 really good cryptocurrencies and then maybe, you know, 400 just okay ones. It's not going to be like that. There will be a couple of behemoths. You know, which ones they're going to be, we'll have to wait and see. And then again, specific areas, you know what I mean? Like, you know, no different to, you know, I don't know what the best bank to invest in is in the world, but I'm guessing there's one. Maybe it's Morgan Chase or something like that. You know, there'll be some DeFi project that's number one, and that'll basically kind of really rule them all. But there'll be other ones that still make money, don't get me wrong. And, you know, same thing for supply chains and all those kind of things. But even then, there's still going to be the standouts. You know, like at the moment, you could say, maybe this is how it is in the future. Bitcoin's the standout. Ethereum's the standout. Maybe Aave's, you know, sort of up there. Uh, and then maybe, you know, Polygon's up there. And then maybe something else. I don't know. It could be anything. And then all the rest, again, they're still making money, but they're not making the same kind of money that the big ones are. You know, fang stocks and things like that. Compare them to something like that. So that is what I'm looking for. So... Again, I expect Russia will just come out with legalizing exchanges, but if they don't, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because you can bet other countries will be watching to see how it plays out. Now I want to get onto the charts. Before I get to the Bitcoin chart, I want you to have a look at how things are performing at the moment. Look at the Dow Jones. Couldn't get back up there. And it's already fallen down now that can turn around at any minute don't get me wrong it's had quite a nice bounce came down here that is basically a v-shaped recovery but it's also basically got to where some old sort of you know su support sort of resistance was and it got rejected from it i just don't feel like there's anything super bullish going on at the moment the fed's news wasn't overly exciting but it wasn't overly bad so people are still in the minds of like so is it inflation getting really bad now we know we've got it but is it going to get really bad or are we going to maybe go into deflation uh and you know then obviously you know it's the complete opposite of inflation or are we going to get the stagflation like people just don't know where things are going at the moment and that's why the markets are kind of just choppy and trading sideways now the cryptocurrency market is doing something different though but let's have a look at the s p 500 it's had something very similar to the dow jones had a V-shaped recovery. It's kind of all over the place. And look at this. Boom. It just got shot. Literally got shot. Now, can it recover? Yep. Will it recover? Ugh, I don't know. I really don't know. I just, I don't see anything, any kind of news out there that is super bullish at the moment to get everyone super excited. You know, the government said they are going to, you know, they're going to continue tapering and they're going to take away $30 billion uh, a month but they're printing a hundred and something billion dollars a month. So really, they're still printing, they're just printing less. And that's what you need to remember. And one of the reasons why I invest in cryptocurrencies, particularly ones that are sort of hard capped or have some kind of burning mechanism and won't just completely you know, print into oblivion, because that's what money will do. That's what governments have been doing forever. That's what happens to every sort of fiat currency that's ever been around through the world is eventually governments have got a hold of it and they've just taxed the hell, ever, taxed the hell out of everybody and printed it to oblivion to buy as much as they can and then that system becomes just so broken they have to move on to another one. And the US dollar has now been around for getting close to 100 years and not too many sort of fiat currencies have lasted that long. A lot have failed a lot sooner. So again, I don't think the US dollar is just about to die in the next kind of weeks or even kind of months or maybe even next kind of few years. But I wouldn't be surprised if in the next sort of 10 to 50 years, maybe we move away from it and something else comes. Now, it could be a lot sooner. Plenty of people talking about some kind of Bretton Woods moment. And again, maybe we now have a, a world reserve currency that is backed up by the US dollar, the British pound, you know, the Australian dollar and you know the digital yuan you know whatever it is that they choose probably won't be the yuan but you know we'll have to wait and see and then do they maybe put bitcoin in there 
does Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum, who knows, you know, what kind of uh, cryptocurrencies might be put in there and they suddenly become part of the reserve world currencies. Only time will tell. So last but not least, let's get to the Bitcoin chart. <laughs> it's playing out at the moment. It really, really is. Like I said, higher high, lower low, higher high, lower low. Now, sorry, lower high, lower high. I said higher high, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Now, other than this wick, we still have been basically doing that at the moment. Here was the high, here was the low, here was the high, which is a lower high. Here's the low, it's a lower low. Other than the wick, the body, here's the high, it was a lower high. Here was the low, it was a lower low. Here was the high, it was a lower high. Now we're waiting to see. Is this going to hold? Now, at the moment, 46,000 has been pretty good support. It's been a buy zone. But again, I'm just not sure that, yeah, I'm just not sure anything else is going to come. I haven't heard any news, anything that's really going to spark the markets up at the moment. It's more indecision. And as long as we're still indecisive and not sure, again, companies are probably going to be like, all right, we've got to take some profits. This isn't going any higher. So that could force it down. And then the retail market gets scared and gets uh, is like, oh my God, this is going lower. And then they sell. Although generally retail have been holding pretty well. But it's easy to hold while not too much is happening until you start to see this kind of stuff. And that's when you can get a real big, excuse me, lot of panic. And so like I said, I am not going to be surprised if we don't continue to go down into the new year. I'm Now, again, I'm never saying that this is what's going to happen because I don't know what's going to happen. But I just wouldn't be surprised if we don't follow this till January. And then again, sometime in January, whether it's January 4th or 20th or 1st or something like that, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't come back down and retest this $42K thousand dollar level and then maybe have one big shakeout that, like I said, comes back down and possibly covers this CME gap that is between 32,500, sorry, I'll bring that over, and 34,500. Now, it may not, it may be just that we come down to here, but I think whatever we get will likely be, a, particularly if we get down to here, it'll be a V-shaped recovery and get us back to somewhere around about here. Not financial advice, though. That's just what I think might happen. It's still dependent on what's going on around the world, particularly if you know we get rate, rate heights and they really start to continue the tapering, well, then people are going to start moving away from the risky, uh, what they call the risky assets. Uh, and cryptocurrencies is one of them so something to consider and again there's people that think you know maybe we're in a bear market and this is just the new bear market where they continue to do fake little pumps uh, take their you know 10 15 20 percent and retail pumps the rest and then it sells off and then when they see a new bottom they jump in and get another you know five or ten percent and then sell off so yeah buyer beware is what i'm saying I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm just not going to be surprised. And at the moment, this is playing out. This has been pretty accurate. Now, again, it's not the exact, but a lower high, a lower low. 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 A lower high, now we're waiting to see, are we going to set a new lower low? And that could definitely come over the weekend. But the weekend, the volume's low, so that could be the spark where, again, big players are like, all right, now's the time to get in and make a move. Unfortunately, I can't give you the answer. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but just beware, be mindful, have a backup plan. If you are well in profits on things, and I did the other day, like I said, I had to even up my, or at least get my cash uh, equivalent up to that 10%, and so I did. Now, if this takes off, yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit, but at least I've got some cash on the side because unfortunately, like I said, I got too carried away, uh, you know, going into dips that weren't really the bottom of the dips and buying into things that had already kind of really pumped. I shouldn't have been putting so much money. Uh, you know, when things are super bullish, you really want to have all your cash just sitting on the side waiting for big dips. But again, I got a little bit carried away and like I said, I still make mistakes and I'll continue to make mistakes. And I'm not going to be too afraid to let you when I to let you know that I believe I made mistakes. Sometimes I'll think I made a mistake, and it won't be a mistake. Uh, uh, that may be a little bit uh, hard to comprehend, but yeah, that's investing.
and that's where I'm at. You know where what I'm doing. I'd love to know what you're doing. Give me your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen in the market? What are you doing? Are you actively buying at the moment or are you sitting on the sidelines, chipping away here and there, which is basically what I'm doing, but keeping basically a lot of cash on the side for if we start to do things like this. And now what I want you to remember is if we get down to here, there's no guarantee that there's a V-shaped recovery. It could be that we continue to go down. So again, don't have all your money ready to buy in at any one price. Just constantly set in, you know, new buy levels for when it gets lower. Again, never so much that, you know, you end up with not enough cash because that is the issue that I had and so I had to fix that up. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment and you know what I think is coming. I'll see you next time.